In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a classic and simple drop-down menu for your website. By the way, before you get started, if you're here, I'm sure you want to become a programmer. And yes, here on YouTube, you can learn a lot. But one of the best ways to actually improve, especially if you want to turn this into a career, is to take some courses made by experts in the field. Usually these courses are structured in a way that makes it easier for you to learn properly and I've selected for you some of the best courses and learning platforms. You'll find the links in the description down below and by using those links you're gonna help this channel as well. So here I've got my index.html file with the right title, then I've linked the style sheets. As you can see I've linked the font awesome style sheet as well because I'm gonna use one icon so I've just linked that. I actually made a video about it so I'll leave the link in the description box down below if you need it. Then I've got live server running and also Pretier which is a code formatter. I've made videos about them as well so all the links will be in the description down below if you want to check them out. So first of all I'm gonna add the header and then the navigation like this. Inside of here a div with the class nav like this. Instead of this div, a link, home, like that. As you can see here, I'm using the hash sign, but you should use the right link, of course. Then, down here, I'm gonna add another div with a class nav, drop down, item, and then also nav item, like this. Instead of that, I'm going to add another link, books like this and then I'm just going to copy and paste the font awesome icon inside of the link like this and here the hash sign is necessary and in this case you won't change it because this link here is going to be used as a sort of button to open and close the drop down menu and you'll see what I mean later on then another link like this music and then down here I can just copy and paste this like that and I'm gonna call it about us like this so this is definitely not going to look pretty as you can see you've just got something like that perfect so now let's actually start styling it so main.css we are going to start with a little reset so about sizing border box and then margin is going to be zero like this the body the background color is going to be something like this, then navigation, background color, something like that with the padding 20 pixels, display flex and justify content center. Okay, so we've got something like this, then nav item color 7 and the margin is going to be 0, 50 pixels, 0, 50 pixels. Then, now item, young element, text decoration, none, because I don't want the underline. The color is going to be the same color. So exact same thing here, like this. Font size, 20 pixels, like that. And then a little effect. So item, like this, hover color is going to be white and the transform scale 1.05 and actually I need to add display block here because otherwise with inline which is the default one scale is not going to work okay so let's see what we've got so this is what we've got as you can see pretty cool perfect by the way, if you want to support this channel and help me keep making videos like this, then check out my Patreon where you can support me and also get exclusive perks. So I'll leave the link in the description box down below if you want to check that out. And thank you so much for the support. Now we need to do something like nav drop down item position relative. We're going to need that later on. And then the icon. So now drop item. The icon is going to be font size, 20 pixels. Margin left is going to be seven pixels. Transform, rotate, freeze, translate, Y is going to be zero pixels. And you'll see why I'm doing this. And then transition, transform like this, 200 milliseconds. And then we are going to add the 
snap job town item open i transform and rotate and this is going to be minus 180 and then this translate y minus two pixels perfect now of course we've got something like this pretty cool but we want the drop down menus of course so let's go back to the index.html file and let's start adding the drop down menus first of all up here i'm going to add another div with the class drop down menu inside of here a few links so let's actually do something like that so here we can do something like thriller action and adventure something like that comedy fiction and then more books as you can see i've used classes so nav drop down item nav item drop down menu etc etc so that i can just have as many drop down menus as i want in this case for example i've got the books and the music drop down menu but you could have as many as you want as i said and that's why i've actually used classes and then here we can do the same exact thing so classic pop rock this let's delete that okay that's enough perfect so we've got something like this of course this is not what we want right so now that we've got that let's go back to the main.css file as you can see we are already here and let's start styling that so drop down menu position absolute that's why i have the position relative here so position absolute then top 100% left 50% transform is going to be translate minus 50% zero then the background color is going to be the same so that padding is going to be 20 pixels 10 pixels 10 pixels 10 pixels like this mean with 100% display let's use flex flex direction column and then align items center so let's see what we've got so as you can see this is what we've got all right of course we're using display flex to see that but later on we're going to change this to none and show that when we click on the on the actual link okay then we're going to use again the with open drop down menu like this display is going to be flex okay so as you can see when the nav drop down item has the class open then we're going to change the display property and show the drop down menu because actually here we're going to have display none okay but let's actually comment that out for now okay so as i said when the nav drop down item has the class open we're gonna change from display none to display flex and the drop down menu is going to be shown of course we're going to add and remove the class open using javascript by the way you might be wondering why i'm not using the hover pseudo class to show the menu when you hover over the link so when you hover over this and show the actual menu as a lot of people actually do and i'm actually not doing that because this is not really good for accessibility since screen readers won't be able to actually see the links in the drop down menu because there is no way to hover over the link uh, using the keyboard so basically they wouldn't be able to actually see the drop down menu and all the links in the drop down menus so i'd rather open and close the menu by clicking on the button which is something that a person using the keyboard can easily do so that's why i'm not using the have a pseudo class to have over that and show the menu but i actually prefer to click on the button okay so then down here we're going to do something like drop down menu like this 100 percent text align is going to be center padding pixels white space and i'm going to show you what this does so basically as you can see this is what you would get if you were to remove that you get something like this this is still fine but i'd rather have all the things on one line if possible so i'm just doing something like this as you can see 
that looks better. Of course, you're not gonna have both menus open at the same time, so you wouldn't see this problem here, okay? Another thing that I wanted to mention is that the, the mean width here, because I actually want the menu to be at least as wide as the actual button, okay? So let's say that I've got like A, B, C, just a little letter here, the menu would be really, really narrow and it wouldn't look nice. So I decided to actually use the mean width 100% of the actual button, okay? Then also the 100% from the top. So basically it starts from here, right? So the top is here, 100% of the height of the element of this element. So the drop down menu starts basically around here, okay? And the left 50% and transform translate minus 50% is just to center the drop down menu because otherwise, without that, you will get something like this. And I actually don't like it. I actually prefer it centered. All right, so that was just uh, a few things that I wanted to explain. Now, as I said, we're going to change this from flex to none so we don't see anything. Perfect. So this is what you actually get. And of course, now we need to add. A little bit of JavaScript to actually open and close the, the drop down menus, etc. etc. So let's go back here. I'm adding the JavaScript in here, but you can have your own file. Okay. So a separate file. I'm just adding that inside the index.html file. So first of all, we're going to get a list of all the drop down menu items because we're going to add an event listener to all of them. So const list drop down menu items something like this is going to be document dot query selector all because we are targeting a class like this perfect then we need to add an event listener to each one of them and we're going to do so by looping through them one by one using for each of course so for each then item like this and then to each item, which is the button like music and books in this case, we're going to add an event listener, click event, and we're going to do something like event prevent default like this. And this is needed because we don't want the link to behave like a real link, but we are using it as a sort of button. So we don't want the default behavior. All right. So we're going to do that. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. I will really, really appreciate it. And also subscribe to the channel as well, because I'm going to post a lot of videos like this one and you don't want to miss them. Then down here, when you click the button, if the item has the class open like this, then we're going to remove it. So item class list, remove, we're going to remove open like this, else. Of course, we are going to add it open like this. So let's actually try to run it and see what we've got. So, so as you can see, the icon rotates and this is this basically. All right. The translate Y is needed because I noticed that when the icon is rotated, it tends to be uncentered vertically. So by using the minus two pixels, we move it down slightly to basically keep it centered. Okay. And of course, the other thing is this one, display flex from none to flex to actually show the drop down menu. So pretty cool, but there are still two problems. The first one is that we can have more than one menu open at the same time. So as you can see, that doesn't look great at all. And so let's actually just fix that. And then let's see how to fix another problem. So to fix that, we are going to go here. So basically when we click on a link to open the menu, we need to first close all of the menus and then open the right one. Okay. And we can do that by looping again through the drop down items. So this drop down menu items for each again, like this, it's going to be item class list remove open. So by doing that, we close all the menus and then we add the class open and we open the right one. So that should fix the problem of multiple menus open at the same time. So let's actually try that out. Okay. So as you can see now, when you click here, this is closed 
and when you click here this is closed perfect but now we have another problem which is we can't close the menus by clicking outside of them so if you click here it doesn't work so we can actually do something like this to fix this problem so we need to go down here and we can add an event listener to the document itself document add event listener usual click like this this drop down menu items for each because of course we don't know which one is open so we're going to just remove the class open from all of them so if there is one open then it's going to be closed and if none of them are open that's fine you just remove a class that you don't have so it basically doesn't change anything so item class list remove open okay so let's actually try that out and see if that works i'm actually clicking but the menu doesn't show up and this is basically due to event propagation also called event bubbling which means that when we click on an element the event bubbles up to all its ancestors so if we click on the drop down item here for example the event triggers the event listener here okay the signal to open the drop down menu is sent but then the event bubbles up so it goes up and up and up through all the ancestors and at the end it reaches the document and by reaching the document this event listener is triggered and the drop down menu is basically closed which means that we're basically opening and closing the drop down menu at the same time and that's why we don't see anything luckily there is an easy fix to this which is adding stop propagation above so here we can add event stop propagation like this okay and by doing this basically the event doesn't propagate it doesn't bubble up and that means that it doesn't reach the document so the second event listener here is not triggered and the menu stays open so let's actually try to see if that works so let's click here everything works if you click here so it works perfectly as you can see you've got the little animation here which is kind of cool in my opinion if you click on either of them the other is closed and if you click outside the drop down menu is closed as well so pretty pretty cool so i'm gonna make a video about an advanced drop down menu with images so stay tuned because i'm gonna post it really really soon if you're watching this video and the other one is already out you should see it now on the screen so go and check that out don't forget to check out my Patreon and also like the video if you liked it and subscribe to the channel as well and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!